Hello everyone. Good day to all of you. I hope you're all doing well, or I guess I should say good evening in this case. It's a little bit out of the norm for me, but I wanted to spend a bit of time today to talk about NIR remission of gear and what and what is not an issue. So in pretty much every gear review I've done, I kind of assess the item and look at it under night vision and talk about if it does have an issue or not. But I realize I haven't actually done a dedicated video explaining what that kind of looks like and what to look out for. So recently I picked up a bunch more of this Chiatai JSDF camo. Uh, for a potential another camo test of it, but uh, I was just testing it myself under NIR and noticed uh, that this hood, uh, Viper hood kind of knockoff that I'm wearing right now, has a little bit of an issue of it, and I also picked up a boonie hat at the same time, which is NIR compliant, so I thought it would make it for a very good comparison between the two to show what that kind of looks like. Broadly speaking, first, to understand NIR compliance, NIR remission, all of that, you pretty much just have two categories, either something works and looks the same, except monochrome, of course, under night vision, or it'll lose whatever pattern it has under night vision. Now, beyond that, I would say there's kind of more so three categories. Of course, one is being it's NIR compliant or it's a natural material in the first place, like, like a cotton or wool, uh, which doesn't have an issue. Or if it's a synthetic, of course, it needs to be treated to become NIR compliant. Otherwise, what you'll see is, for instance, right now you can see I'm wearing just all this JSDF camo, but when we actually look at this under night vision, which I'll switch to in a second, this is just going to end up looking like all one solid color. However, if you look at these straps right here, kind of strap material to weave uh, 3D elements through on this camo, this actually glows and reflects back. And I would say that that's the worst level, of course, because then you, then you glow like a Christmas tree. And later in the video, I did want to discuss just kind of what type of gear in generalities to look for that doesn't have an issue with NIR remission. But uh, first, let's go ahead and actually go under night vision here so I can show you what I'm referring to with all of this. So here I am with all the same stuff on. You can see just with the boonie hat instead of the helmet and the night vision, because now you're looking through that. So what you can see is, like I said, this netting here is really reflecting off uh, this whole sleeve part of the Viper hood knockoff. Uh, is really getting washed out, like I said, kind of turning into just a solid color. Now, another thing I did want to talk about, if you notice, I'm going to move around here a little bit. So this kind of spotlight effect you can see around this area, that's the IR illuminator. So whenever you're testing um, for IR remission, it's very important that you actually use an illuminator because if you don't have an illuminator, pretty much everything, even if it has an issue under IR, is going to look, it's going to look completely fine, uh, except in very extreme cases. So this would be a good point to talk about optical brighteners because that's really what I'm referring to when I'm talking about extreme cases. So what I have right here is just your run-of-the-mill plaid shirt like you'd find in pretty much any retail or outlet store. And of course I have the same boonie hat right here you can see just for a comparison because this is a good benchmark for NIR compliance. So optical brighteners, what these are is they're really added to make the item look more clean and more appealing when you're buying it in a store. Uh, usually you won't find those on gear items themselves, however, you can accidentally impart them onto gear items by washing them with detergents that have brighteners in them. So there's a bit of an outdated, slightly outdated uh, website, armystudyguide.com, that has a good list of them. As I said, it's a little bit older, so it doesn't have a comprehensive list, and some of them may have changed, but in general you can kind of use that as a reference for what detergents to avoid. Now, if you have a gear item that happens to already have brighteners in it, there's pretty much no fixing that. Um, there is some potential solutions I'll discuss later that can work in certain circumstances, but generally aren't a good idea. Uh, if you accidentally use a detergent with a brightener in it, you can kind of wash that out. It's pretty difficult and most likely you won't get it all out, but uh, Usually this is only an issue in things that come with brighteners. So what you're going to see here is just look at this shirt. Obviously vis visible spectrum. It looks like a plaid shirt. But if I switch here to night vision. So you can see that even with the illuminator not even turned on right now, this looks like a completely just a solid just color. Again, comparing that to the boonie from earlier, you can still see there's that camo pattern. So. You need to make sure to avoid optical brighteners. These are a huge issue. So is there a way to fix gear that has an issue with NIR remission? Take for example, like I said, this netting material right here. The answer is not really. Uh, I've tested uh, a few sprays that 
I saw recommendations on in the past, such as UV Killer, didn't really do anything whatsoever. I've heard claims of some photo sprays that maybe could help, but I haven't really found any that uh, definitively would work so far. If you know of any, do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to try them out, but pretty much the only solution that I found to be pretty effective is spray paint. Kind of the same thing that you see with rifles, uh, which isn't really the focus of this video, but do note that certain anodization dyes that they use in rifles that can kind of make them have an issue with IR remission as well. I know the one, that one that gets talked about quite a bit is the Zenico anodization tends to glow a little bit more, though I wouldn't really say it's necessarily enough to be an issue, um, but it definitely does look different under an IR. But in the case of these netting straps, I could paint over these because they don't need to be too flexible. Obviously, you don't want to take an entire garment like this and paint it because then this is going to be really stiff, really uncomfortable, and it's just going to be detrimental to the long-term durability of the fabric. So would highly not recommend that. Pretty much, if you have an item like this that you want to use that has optical brighteners in it for serious use, I would definitely just recommend seeking out a different garment or piece of gear because there's pretty much no fixing it at that point. But otherwise, if it's something small like this, yeah, just some paint on there will work. Uh, if you're looking at rifles, of course, you can spray paint your whole rifle. That'll help a lot under NIR or Cerakote. Um, there is an NIR series of Cerakote, which works phenomenally, but even the regular Cerakote, I've really found no issues with that under night vision either. They're both really good. And personally, I actually have a kind of hard time distinguishing the benefits of the NIR Cerakote from the normal one under night vision, but just something to think about there. But what you'll notice is if you have your IR illuminator either too bright or too focused that it'll kind of make things that even if they don't have an issue with IR emission, they'll kind of look like they do. So case in point, I know the focus is right around this area. You can see also how things are kind of getting washed out there. So when you are testing this or if you are testing this for yourself, just make sure to have it kind of as broad of, as possible of a beam on your illuminator and also have it um, as kind of dim as possible within reason. In my case, I have mine currently on the lowest setting and it's as broad as possible, which is still a pretty tight divergence. But before I ended the video, I did want to talk now about some recommendations I have in general for what to look for, what type of gear to kind of in general get that tends not to have an issue with NIR emission. And that's going to be a lot of NATO gear actually. Um, so I've tried a lot of gear over the years. I used to be really into collecting a lot of Russian gear, which unfortunately kind of ended when the war there really escalated and now it's just impossible to get that. One thing I always noticed with a lot of that Russian gear is it had a huge issue with NIR emission, pretty much anything there, uh, anything from there glowed, even the legit stuff. The other stuff that always has a major issue uh, with NIR emission is the Chinesium, the stuff you tend to find on Amazon. Now, some of it, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, videos talking about like what kind of uh, gear, budget gear can you get from Amazon that's serviceable or, you know, not necessarily Amazon, but like the, the cheaper, the budget gear. Um, yeah, some of it might work fine for like range use and all of that, but I would say that for real practical usage to go with some like a well-known manufacturer, reputable, it's gonna be generally more expensive, but um, the big differences are gonna be under night vision, that it generally will be NIR compliant. Usually it'll be an actual advertised feature uh, some good things to look out for. Usually multicam, if it's authentic multicam material, is going to actually be NIR compliant. If it's a knockoff, of course, watch out for that. It won't be. Uh, but legit, cry multicam is always all good with that. Uh, other patterns, of course, if it says it's NIR compliant, then no need to worry about anything there. It'll be all good as well. Uh, some things to also note, um, discussing materials and patterns is when you're looking at solid colors, some of them are, it's kind of hard sometimes to tell if it is having an issue or not. For example, this HSGI belt that I have right here, you know, it's a pretty well-known manufacturer and all that, but this one actually does have a bit of an issue with IR emission. You can kind of see how this is glowing a little bit more than it should be if I kind of move around here in the beam, much more so than the rest of my uniform is here. As far as what I've seen, um, it does seem like olive drab has kind of an issue where it reflects, has a bit more remission across the board from all manufacturers. Um, German stone gray, Steingrau, is actually really, really good, I've found, under IR, which is, you know, it, that's kind of why that color exists. It's kind of its uh, advertised feature is that it does well under IR, and it, and it certainly does. Of course, uh, as I said earlier, multicam, and really a lot of the camo patterns are pretty easy to just test in general to see how well they do under IR. 
And actually, speaking of gear, you know, you don't need to go like crazy high end and splurge a whole lot of money on it. Um, actually, a lot of the USGI surplus gear from like the G-Watt era, a lot of it is actually pretty solid uh, in terms of NIR remission. So that is a very good and very inexpensive option if you're looking to get a solid bit of gear that's actually not going to make you glow like a Christmas tree, then it can help. Let me know if you have any questions or any other feedback. Uh, if you also have more experience on this topic, I always love to hear it in the comments below. Otherwise, take care and I hope to see you all in the next one.